What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. And with this video, we are jumping back into Marvel Dark Ages, issue number 3. Now if you haven't been keeping up with this line, go ahead, check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything happening in this line. And what Tom Taylor is introducing us to is a world vastly different than the one we know. With a being of immense power calling itself the Unmaker, being sealed away in Earth for billions of years. But with it trying to rise up out of the Earth's core, Doctor Strange opens up a portal to a dimension where an EMP blast covers the entire Earth. With Doctor Strange dying in this encounter, the portal is left open and the entire world can do nothing to save their technology. And so our story picks us up seven years after those events. And we have learned that Apocalypse has kidnapped Tony Stark. He is using Magneto to block out the EMP. And it appears that he has goals of world domination. And so with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we immediately see that Johnny has his flame on. And it looks like something serious might be going on. But the reality of the situation is that they're living normal lives. Or at least to the best of their ability. Now Spider-Man gives us narration through all of this. Picking up seven years in the future, we have a bunch of new children running around. We have Jessica Jones and Luke Cage having their having their daughter Danny. Peter Parker having young May. And Johnny isn't doing any kind of fighting. He is heating up a tea kettle for a tea party. And so as everyone sits around, they're really just enjoying their day, having a good time. Living their life to the best of their abilities. But as everyone is enjoying their day, we see the arrival of Jessica Jones. And as she walks up to everybody, they can see the concern on her face. Something has happened. And that something is Tony Stark disappearing. And that's where we pick up in the work lab of Tony Stark. Pepper saying that Captain America had come in, they walked out, and neither of them ever returned. And so having Blade, Wolverine, Gabby all sitting here working on the case, trying to figure out what happened here, they get the scent of Mystique. Realizing that this was some kind of trap, they follow the trail of wherever this leads to. Following this trail, going outside of the cave, they find the location where Tony Stark had been ambushed. Killing many vampires, he was not able to overcome them. And as they examine further, as they start to get the scent of who was here, they know that it was Apocalypse. And that's what takes us to the meeting of the minds. With Doctor Doom declaring that they have to do whatever it takes to get Tony Stark back. Now we know Doctor Doom at the end of the day, he really doesn't care about Tony Stark's life. What he does care about is Tony Stark is unarguably the best weapons maker this world has ever seen. And if Apocalypse has him, who knows what they could create together. And Doctor Doom lets Black Panther know that everything you have built, this nation of free people trying to have a normal life, this will all go up in flames. Now, of course, Pepper is the first individual to raise her hand and say, I will go get him. The only issue is, they don't even know if Tony Stark is alive. Not only that, they have absolutely no idea where he is being held. Not only that, they have spent years avoiding Apocalypse and all of his forces, doing everything they can to stay away from any kind of conflict. But they do have a weapon up their sleeve that could rush in very quickly and be able to be a scout for the forces of Black Panther. And that's where they send out Quicksilver. Now the idea is that Quicksilver, he would have been in and out in a heartbeat. Really just to investigate what is going on, where Tony Stark might be held, and to find out any other reconnaissance he can along the way. And he might have done that. The only issue is, when he arrived there, he saw Magneto. He saw his father being held prisoner, being used as some kind of EMP blocker. And Quicksilver cannot help himself with him rushing in as fast as he can possibly go, 
as he reaches out for Magneto, there is some kind of defensive force field that is preventing him from going in. Not only that, it sends a shock through his body, he goes falling to the ground unconscious. And that is because of the defenses of Doc Ock. Now at first, they toy with the idea of locking him away with the others, of putting him under the control of the Purple Man like everyone else and putting him to work. But Apocalypse has a better idea. He wants to send him back as a Trojan horse. And with him arriving at the throne of Black Panther, they ask for a report. They ask for the sit rep. And at first, he is very unresponsive. That is, until he looks up, we can see the purple in his eyes. And before anybody can even blink, Quicksilver is making his way around the room. He is doing some damage. He grabs a spear. With Spider-Man not being quick enough to stop him, we see Johnny go to turn his flame on. But he wasn't fast enough. And we see Quicksilver, he takes that spear and he jabs it directly into the back of the Human Torch. And with Johnny falling to the ground fatally wounded, it took Jean Grey one second to shut him down. But in that one second, there was absolute devastation. And as Sue rushes over to Johnny's side, he cannot control his flame. He tells Sue and all of the others that they need to run. They need to get away as fast as possible, with Sue refusing to leave his side. With her holding Johnny's head in her hands, we see the Human Torch light up for one last time before he completely disintegrates. Because no matter how powerful Sue Storm is, she could not stop the death of Johnny. She was able to protect herself, she was able to protect everybody in this room, but the Human Torch is dead. And so we pick up a little bit later with everyone sitting around the bed of Quicksilver. And now that he is in the right mind, obviously he feels entirely guilty for everything that just transpired. Knowing he wasn't in control, they understand this, but at the same time, he did just kill Johnny. And so this isn't easy for Storm, not in the slightest bit. But he starts to tell us exactly what he saw, using Magneto. Not only that, Apocalypse has gathered himself the smartest and greatest minds the Earth has ever had, with all of them under the control of the Purple Man. Now Sue, after hearing that Reed Richards is still alive, though she just lost Johnny, this gives her some kind of new purpose, a sense in life again, some kind of hope to strive for. And that information right there, it cemented all of the events that are about to happen. Because Reed Richards and Franklin, they were presumed dead for at least four years now. Finding out that they are alive, Sue will stop at nothing to go get them. And so they prepare the strike force because they are heading into Europe the very next morning. Now, picking up with Apocalypse, he knows what is on the horizon. He knows that they are going to retaliate. He knows that they will be coming for everyone that they love. And though they will be mighty in force, Apocalypse, he has his army as well. And the first line of defense will be the symbiotes. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I personally have been loving Dark Ages, but that's probably because I have a huge bias for dystopias, for post-apocalyptic worlds, especially the steampunk aspect of things. And so this is right down my alleyway. And Tom Taylor really has his hands full when it comes to his own lines, when it comes to Marvel, when it comes to DC. And while not all of his stories are 100%, this one for sure is definitely kicking off without a hitch. More than anything from this story, I am really looking forward to seeing what kind of defenses Apocalypse has built up. Because we gotta remember, this is a guy who talks about survival of the fittest. Only the strongest, only the best will continue on. And we can only imagine what mutants he has on his side. Because at the end of the day, when you have to pick sides, when the world descends into this kind of chaos, truly anything can happen. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. 
If you have not yet, do me a favor, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out, and until the next breakdown.